currently in the John A. Lally Athletic Complex. I'm Josh Shalman, your Citrus TV Volleyball Bee Reporter, joined by graduate student Ava Palm. First of all, Ava, thanks so much for joining us. Yes, thank you for having me, Josh. Such a pleasure. Uh, I, I want to start out because Salt City Classic MVP over here. I, I already, you know, coming into Syracuse, I know you've been here a few months now, but in the start of the regular season, three games down and already racking up the kills. How was this weekend for you? I just want to get that recap. Um, honestly, I'm very, very pleased with my own performance and also the performance of my team as a whole. I think we did a really, really great job of um, showing what we're capable of, um, especially moving forward into conference play, you know, and uh, coming off the season that this squad had last year, you know, like we're definitely here to make a statement and kind of um, like we've labeled this our redemption tour. So I think that's a really cool thing that we're working on. Um, and yeah, it felt really good. You know, we've, like you said, we've been here for a couple months already. Like we were here as a team without the coaches for a whole month in the summer, um, just completely like intrinsically motivated, I guess, like just to keep moving forward and keep practicing even when like no one was making us, you know, and then uh, coming through a preseason and double days every day, it was double practices every day, definitely tough, but I think we really persevered and um, yeah, we have a lot of potential. I think we showed a lot of that on the court this weekend. So I wanted to kind of go backwards and then move and transition into now, starting with your time the last couple of years at CSU Bakersfield, a place that you know well. Uh, obviously, your father also played on the collegiate level there. Mm -hmm. What did that mean to, to you and your family that you were able to kind of go back there and play, you know, volleyball for them? Yeah, it was a really, really incredible experience. I think um, in regards to that, like the cards kind of aligned or the stars kind of aligned all at the same time. Um, I had gone to spend my first two years of my undergrad at uh, UTEP in El Paso. Didn't work out the way I wanted, you know, so I came back home. Um, I think it was really just divine timing for me. Like it was such a great opportunity. I kind of like, uh, like just found my way again, kind of, and like who I was as a player. And those coaches really allowed me to grow and like gave me the freedom to make mistakes as well and um, have those kind of opportunities I think I couldn't have gotten anywhere else. Um, and, and now transitioning to now, here we are, Syracuse Gym. Coming from across the country after growing up there as well uh, in California and Bakersfield, right, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, how did that feel transitioning, you know, taking your time and, and, and your talents here to Syracuse University in New York? Oh man, it honestly like sometimes doesn't even still feel real, you know, like I think after spending two years back home, after spending two years away, like I was ready to come back home and then after being there again, I was like ready to leave again, you know, I didn't know like exactly how far, but um, I think also this has just been great timing in my life. I think it was just perfect, like kind of how things aligned um, coming off my my beach season actually at CSU be in the spring. Um, and yeah, I was like super, super excited. I've never lived this far east, obviously. Like I've never ever lived in New York too, um, which is really cool. But like we talked about a little earlier before we, the camera started rolling, um, this is way different experience, but I really, really love it so much. Like Syracuse is so beautiful. Um, uh, it was kind of rough getting adjusted to this time zone at first. Sometimes I still forget, like I'll like, I'll text someone at like six in the morning and like expect them to be awake, you know, but it's like 3 a.m. back home. So, um, yeah, it's still kind of been interesting, but um, definitely my team, uh, my teammates have made it like very, very comfortable and like have made it felt like home very welcoming. So that's been really nice. Yeah, I'll piggyback on that. I want to ask, you know, with the family back home, uh, what, what's the plans traveling wise? Are, are they coming to a few games this season? Have they been watching you? Uh, you know, play play in the games and play in the Salt City Classic this past weekend. Yeah, my um my dad is like my biggest fan, like biggest supporter ever. Like he follows everything. He was very very involved at CSUB as well. He actually is like he's the ESPN um, play by play commentator for the Big West. So he does for like specifically that school. So he did all my volleyball games. It was like very in the know in the university. Um, which I'm very, very grateful for. Like he's grown up in sports. Like he's honestly like helped to make me the player I am today. So that's really incredible that I've gotten that support, you know, um, and we're playing in California in a couple of weeks. So that's really yeah. cool Stanford and Cal. So um, I think most of my family that is able is gonna try to make those games up north. Um, and actually talking to my sister today, she wants to come for my like grad senior night um, in November, right before Thanksgiving. So hopefully we can make that work and she'll get to see my life out here. Yeah. How great of timing can it be that two ACC teams join and they're all from California? Perfect timing, yeah. right? It's just perfect. <laughs> I know it's so great. Um, going Speaking of ACC and going back to Syracuse, obviously a very big down year last season. Um, 
but you decided to, to come to Syracuse and play volleyball here. How big of an influence was Coach Bake in that decision and kind of what made you decide um, to, to come here even after uh, down year last year? That's a good question. Um, you know, meeting with the coaches on my recruiting visit and even like prior to me coming out here when we got together for a Zoom call um, in those initial like couple days, um, he was very honest and upfront about what they were trying to accomplish this year and he knew it was going to be really hard and he knew people would doubt his process and what he was trying to do. Um, but I don't know, I feel very, very passionate about people who are really strong in their convictions and I know that he is one of those people and um, also the girls as well. Like I spoke to a couple of the girls over Zoom um, during those first couple of days and they were also super motivated. Like. You could tell by what they said that they were mature, like way beyond their years in college. Like obviously a lot of them are returning as sophomores off their freshman season last year and they were called up and tried to, or had to step up on the court, you know, and play big roles, um, which is really impressive. And I really amend, commend them for that. Um, but yeah, I think teammates and coaches combined, like it was, I felt really passionate about being a part of this regrowing program for Syracuse, like such an amazing, incredible school for other reasons, you know, and like I want to put volleyball on the map for them too. And I think for Coach Bake and for this coaching staff, another reason they wanted you here, you have great leadership skills. You were a captain the past two seasons at Bakersfield. Mm -hmm. And I want to kind of talk about that because there's some younger players that made their debuts this weekend. Ashley made her debut, Emma. Um, what veteran presence do you think you bring, not only on the court, but off it as well? Um, you know, I've actually kind of like taken a different approach to leadership, like since I've been here, you know, like I know. I'm one of five grad transfers and one of seven transfers. So I think there's um, a lot of new faces, like so many of the girls on this team have really, really great leadership qualities, you know? And um, I feel like for me and myself, like the best way I fit into that is just leading by example, being the hardest worker, being the most vocal, enthusiastic teammate, um, and just playing my role in that aspect, you know? And like, I want the girls to look at me and see someone they can trust and see a teammate they can rely on on and off the court. Um, we have great leaders leaders right now who were elected by the team as captains, um, Clara, Nikki, and Liz. And I think they do a really great job. Like Liz is also, she's my roommate, so not to be biased, but I love Liz. Like she does a really, really great job of like advocating for us to the coaches and also like, like laying down some ground rules for ground rules for self accountability and responsibility within the team, you know, because obviously like it's older players jobs to kind of like help the younger girls learn, like teach them the aspects that like we were taught, you know, like whether we learned it the hard way or not, like we prefer to have them not learn it the hard way. So it's kind of just like take our word for it. Like we know. But yeah, I think um, we're really starting to work into dynamics as a team as well with like um, like our leadership and then um, also like the leaders like teaching the younger girls how to lead as well, you know, like lead yourself and lead those around you. So I think we're doing well in that aspect. I asked Emma and Annie a, a question the other night that I wanted to also get your opinion on. Um, we talked about you transferring over. Only six of the 18 players that were on last year's team are still on the team now. I wanted to ask about chemistry because it didn't seem like there was any factor uh, this past weekend. Everything, everything seemed to be clicking. So I kind of wanted to get your take on what do you think the team chemistry is right now? What is it going to be as the season progresses? Because, you know, that was just the opening weekend. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, it's kind of interesting. Like, we got here. It usually happens like this, though. Like, in the very beginning, when you're here in the summer, everything is so happy. Everyone is so happy to be back, like, so excited, you know, for the future. And then um, once you kind of hit, like, a little bit of adversity and a little bit of challenges, like, maybe in your preseason when people are getting tired, like, mentally and physically, I like, can kind of take a dip, you know? And I think... Um, what is the most telling about teams is how you recover from that, from those kind of things. And I think like we definitely had to work through um, some of that, you know, like on a day to day basis when we were practicing twice a day and lifting in between. Um, it can be really exhausting, you know, and I think we did a really good job of still like keeping each other motivated. Um, and when you go through things like that with your teammates, um, it really helps build your chemistry, you know, like you feel like your teammates trust you and that you can trust them and they have your back, you know, and like no matter what, even if we're all tired, we're still gonna work for the person next to us. And I think um, that's a really great thing about having double day practices in your preseason is just being able to spend so much time together and really get to know each other. Um, for the future, I mean, to be honest, like the teams that we've played this weekend, like are, nothing compared to the teams we'll face in conference, you know? So I don't think this weekend actually we were faced with that much challenge. Like 
like we are confident in our capabilities as a team and um, as individuals as well, like physically, but I think that we will be challenged soon in the future that will really put us to the test and see like actually how capable we are of coming together and still keeping that bond and like helping it motivate us rather than like bringing us apart when we're faced with adversity. So we'll see. Ava, we really went through it all. Uh, the last question I have for you is, so far, again, in a small sample size, you mentioned that, but 12 kills per game, not the first time you've really led in that category before. I just want to know your expectations for yourself and for the rest of the team for the rest of the season. Yeah, um, for myself, I mean, definitely hope to keep double digits every match. Um, that's a goal, I think, like at my age and at this level, like every person in my position should be striving for it and be able to achieve it with the right opportunities. Um, and to be honest, like I wasn't actually that satisfied with like my numbers. Like I had kills, but I, I made quite a few errors too that I'd like to clean up, you know, I think. But um, like I said, with the teams we faced, like against programs like, like the ones that we played this weekend, I think you can kind of account for more of those errors, you know, when you're trying to like find yourself, like we switch our lineups a little bit, you know, so just like finding that comfortability within yourself with like uh, different people on the court, you know, you don't usually play a match with, um, will definitely help me in the future. But yeah, I think, Starting weekend, I'm happy with it, but I know that I, I'm never satisfied and I know I'll continue to get better and I want to keep getting better. Um, on the team, I'm, I'm sure they feel the same way, you know, like we came into practice today. It was a short practice coming off a three match weekend, um, but I think we did a really good job of still staying focused, um, which can be really difficult sometimes, like everyone's tired, but um, yeah, I know my team is never satisfied either like we have targets picked out in our conference that we want to take down that we know we can and it's not going to be easy but we're up for the challenge so it'll be good thank you so much for taking the time and good luck with the rest of the season thank you so much